Um, first of all, let's talk about the problem we're trying to solve. We have one, our hero. He lives in a fishing village on an island. And the universities are a long way away. He's tried these online classes, these MOOCs, and one challenge he finds out is kind of he's kind of feeling alone in the studies. He does the social networking stuff, but in reality, you know, they ain't very social. So one solution we're proposing is something very simple. How about Juan actually looks for other people on the island that want to study online with him? You know, they can get together and um, work on the class at the same time. And what's really exciting is they can meet at Juan's favorite cafe, where they can drink, they can eat, and they can do Google Hangouts and Skype with other students from way afar. So what are the steps we need to take? First of all, Juan needs to connect with Anita, and she is local. And they get together and create a team. Or Juan joins a local learning hub located in a school or Juan's favorite cafe. And once again, gets his coffee. And the important thing here is Juan gets educated. So how are we going to make this happen? Well, first of all, we'll start with something simple, a map. And from that map, what we do is a local search, a little bit of proximity searching. And finally, what you're able to do is find your team or find your hub. But you can also use these same tools in order to find other students. And why would you like to be able to do this? Why, what's, what's the drivers here? First of all, face-to-face -face meets kind of an online course universe these MOOCs. So it's kind of the blending between the world of, of standard education and online education. A lot of times when you work on a face-to-face -face basis, um, the dynamics of the team change. And also at the same time, what we think is going to happen is that you're going to increase course completion. This actually complements local schools and colleges. So anybody will be able to create these type of hubs or teams. And um, a lot of subjects like architecture and geology are actually local. So what's the value here? How are we, how, how are we going to extract value for a customer? Well, we'll be working on a freemium model. And essentially what we're looking at, local institutions are willing to pay a premium service for privacy, analytics, as well as features. So how do we make cash? Sales to MOOC vendors, in-app sales and services. We have costs though, platform, build image, local marketing, sales funnel channel, local advertisement support, legal. Now we did do a set of surveys and interviews. We conducted two surveys. Um, these were one after the other. We actually learned a lot from the first survey and that, that um, led toward a lot of changes in the second survey. There was a total of 19 respondents. We also had four interviews and two of these were taped. The lessons we learned here is that there was a very high use of third-party tools. We got very mixed levels of satisfaction and a high number of courses taken was incredible. We had one person that actually had taken 50 courses, yet there was very high levels of drop-offs. Now, this actually challenged our initial assumptions. We were thinking, oh, MOOCs would, you know, it might be a viable business there. And we kind of decided that you know, you might want to focus more on MOOC tools and services, essentially selling the shovels instead of panning for gold. The market size analysis we did indicated that 7 million people that are currently involved in this market, we estimate in five years that that should go up to about 300 million worldwide. The size of the market currently is about 15 million, and in five years we estimate the market will go up to 300 million. The initial target we have is 19 countries, 29 cities with very high concentration of educational institutions, 300 million local population, and our niche here um, is MOOC services. Excluding MOOC content and credentials, we think that there's probably a $130 million business here within five years. The lessons from the surveys and interviews is MOOCers well pay money if they feel as though MOOCs lead toward credentials and jobs. So let's show you. 
So teaching us, this is a very raw prototype, uh, MOOC Tools um, demo, and we're focused here on local teams at hubs. Uh, first of all, what we do want to do is find your crew. So here we go, we're going to use a search, do a proximity search um, for all the different students within a Coursera class. We find a group of students that are local to us, create our team. And that team, what we're going to do is actually just ask for, you know, very few people to be able to join it. We go ahead and add a group of people to that team. Um, these people have already registered, but we can send invites out via email um, and other such vehicles. One important thing we, we've set up here is we do have the ability to speak multiple languages, any type of language, um, most languages of the world. Um, with This platform is also mobile ready. What that means is it's just a web page, but it actually fits. Our entire team would like to thank you very much for um, joining us today. We look forward to your input and ideas.